Hey guys and guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are covering a seldomly covered subject, one that I feel is not really well addressed here on YouTube, and that is how to clean the primary mirror on your SCT telescope. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count, and having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. Now, before we get into the cleaning procedure, I will say guys, uh, if you have a uh, SCT, chances are there's really no reason that you should be cleaning your primary mirror the only thing that you know like because it's a sealed system so uh, really there shouldn't be anything getting in there i mean if the scope is older it was exposed to a lot of dust or something like that maybe some bugs got in and you know there's some you know bug debris or whatever on there that might be reasons for it like if you see like three dust specks please 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 do not do this chances are you're going to do more harm than good uh, but i did you know i want to demonstrate i wanted to make this video for a while i've done this once before it came out you know very well so hopefully that'll be the same thing uh, with this one and of course before we get into this uh you might be wondering what the heck is this beast not a very common scope this is a meat 16 inch rcx uh 400 i've made a whole video series about it so if you're curious you know i'm linking it up above and having said all that let's get down to looking at the tools that you're going to need to complete the cleaning procedure Alrighty, guys so now the stuff that you're going to need you know will kind of depend on you know how much cleaning you're going to do to your primary mirror i'll kind of talk about you know like the different things that you could potentially want to clean or could you know like leave out steps that you might want to leave out but assuming let's say if you want to do the whole cleaning procedure i'll go over everything that you're going to want to have uh tissues uh these guys are here these are kleenex these are non-lotion no um fragrances or anything like that uh good idea to have these uh you're going to want some kind of container where you're going to put your cleaning uh, fluid into and I'll kind of talk about what I'm going to use there. Uh, this right here, this is very important. Um, you, you know, if you're going to do like, you know, touch the mirror at all. Uh, besides, you know, just blowing it off with some compressed air. Uh, this is a squirt bottle. You'll kind of see it in action. Uh, they so I bought this one on the Amazon. I don't know if you could get these local. I can't find one local anywhere. I'll have a link in the description. You know, a very cool bottle actually for, you know, the little that it costs. Cotton balls, lots and lots of cotton balls. So, you know, like 400 counts should do you, uh, you know, having more. It's not gonna hurt nothing. Okay, so uh, you will not need a motorcycle to do this, but what you do need is something that you're gonna line the inside of the SCT with so that the water kind of runs off of, you know, like when, you, when you're kind of, you know, uh, doing the cleaning procedure and it doesn't get all over the inside of your scope. Uh, so I, what I did is I needed like a pretty large sheet because it's a large scope, you know, it's a 16 inch SCT. For a smaller SCT, like one of these will be fine. This is just poster board, like this is kind of thicker heavier duty stuff that i found locally here at fred meyers but you know something that's kind of like a thicker poster board uh, will work or you know like i couldn't find anything that's an actual plastic if you could find something that's plastic that's this big that'd work even better and last but not least uh you are going to want to have um preferably compressed air as well this is you know this is kind of like a luxury item i mean like if you, you're probably not going to buy all of this you know to do you know like your primary mirror i actually did because you know i clean optics pretty often uh but this is just a little you know kind of like you know a one gallon airbrush compressor uh this particular one comes from harbor free tools uh you know i'll have a link on the amazon to one just in case you know you want to order one um the other important thing and i'll have a link to one of these as well is that you do want to have a filter so this thing uh filters out all moisture all oils uh and particulates down to uh five microns you know and then also another cool thing to have is the really long kind of blow nozzle you know so that way you could uh, blow stuff off and you guys will see this in action in a little bit. And I think that covers everything that you need for the cleaning procedure. So let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so here's what we got going on inside here. So as you can see, um, you need your, you know, whatever SCT that you're working on and you need the corrector plate removed. So on this one, we've already done that. 
If you're not familiar with how to remove your corrector plate, I'm linking up my video on how to remove your corrector and clean that. So please check that out before proceeding to this video. Alrighty guys, and just you know, real quick as a quick bit of prep, the only thing that I forgot to mention in the list of items that you need is some distilled water. So let's go ahead and uh, prep our cleaning solution. So you wanna have you know some kind of a clean container, like you know, this has already been pre-washed and clean so the clean solution that i'm just going to use is you know kind of homemade so i'm going to use about uh, 50 percent water distilled water very important that it's not tap water that you're putting into the, your uh, uh, rinse bottle and into your clean solution distilled water does not have any uh, minerals or anything like that so that is a very important step uh, rum and alcohol, you know, like this is 70%, like 99%, you know, the work as well, you know, just or whatever percentage. Uh, you could technically use just distilled water for this, like having a little alcohol in there does kind of help, um, you know, clean gunk off um, a little easier. Um, and then I'm going to put just like as tiny of a drop as I can of soap like this stuff I think I bought a target or something like that. But anyway, what you want is soap that is just you know, uh, it doesn't have any dyes uh, chemicals or um, Perfumes or anything like that. And this is dish soap by the way. I forget if I mentioned that it's a dish soap So it's going to be in the dish soap aisle uh, many stores have you know, like Dawn makes one I believe but anyway, so as tiny of a drop as I can, you don't really want a lot of this because then, okay, so boom, tiny little drop, perfect. Okay, so our clean solution is made. By the way, I know some of you are smarter than me and you guys have other solutions that you use, you know, use whatever you want. This is, you know, I've used this plenty of times on plenty of optics. Works great, I like it. Um, so yeah, so if you get some kind of super duper solution, you know, that's great. Uh, uh, please make your own video about it. <laughs> okay guys, so now we are kind of ready to start to get it to the cleaning uh, solution. So um, if you guys don't have a compressor, like, you know, like I've got set up again, again, you know, you want to have one set up that's got a good filter. Uh, so mine right now is set to about 30 psi. You don't want this to be set very high, you know, like, so you, you don't want it to basically, you know, blast the air like really hard at it. Like this is a very gentle stream that's similar to like what a, you know, like an optical bulb will, uh, you know, put out, which is what you want. Okay, so the first step is that, you know, I am going to kind of blow this thing off. As you guys can see, there's a little bit of cobwebs on there. Um, and then, by the way, just in case you're wondering, like, you know, why this mirror needs to be clean, I have no idea. Um, the original owner, he was a, you know, scientist that's fairly well renowned of this scope. And he said he's never been in here to touch the mirror or anything like that. Like, to me, it looks like it's been wiped before. You know, I'll have to trust his word. Um, Overall, you know, maybe it's just something that, uh, you know, like originally, you know, Mead wiped this at the factory and just over the years, some dust got into the wiping. But anyway, I think it could use a, a little bit of a cleaning. Alrighty guys, so the next step, I am personally going to put down the microfiber cloth down here, right below where the mirror is. Um, not super necessary, but uh, when I've done this in the past, I do get a little bit of water bleed through. Um, so that way this kind of catches any water that might drip off of our runoff sheet, basically. Um, although, you know, usually it's not a lot and you can just wipe it, but I'll just do that. And then at this point, what we're ready to do is to grab this guy right here. And to put in our water runoff sheet. Basically, typically this is a little bit easier to do on the regular SCT because it just has, you know, like a round aluminum tube. The R6 kind of has the scope, a weird, you know, shaped tube that's not quite round. Uh, but what you want to do is, you know, quite simply, just get this kind of right behind the mirror so that when you're squirting water, it runs off on the sheet and not get everywhere. <sighs> All right, 
right, so there you go. Success story. And I'm actually, let's see. So I've got this paper kind of doubled up here. So I'm going to rotate this to where a little bit to where water is actually going to be running off um, on that double portion more than anything. I okay, that should be fine. Okay, so you want to point the tube down to where basically, you know, when you squirt water in there, water is just going to be running off basically um, and, you know, dripping down. And then uh, the next step, of course, is to put your drip tray, you know, kind of right where the water is going to be running off. Alrighty guys, so the first step is you're going to take your squirt bottle uh, and then essentially what you want to do is give the mirror a good rinse. Now normally if you've ever cleaned the daub mirror, uh, what you do is, you know, rinse it like, you know, just soldering the faucet or, uh, you know, better yet, just kind of submerge it completely. Um, here though, you know, since we can't really remove the primary mirror very easily, what we're going to do is just give it a good, good squirt out of the bottle. Okay, and then just real quickly guys, as you guys can see, that's not running off into the right area. So I'm going to move that before I proceed. Okay. And then, so I am doing about half the mirror because we're going to tilt the scope over the other direction and do the other half. So, you know, give it a good rinse. This is a very safe step to do because, you know, the less contact that you do on the mirror, the better. So once you kind of do this, um, if you, if all, if all you know, you had was a little bit of dust on the mirror, this might be the only step that you really got to do guys. Okay. So I feel like I've got it a good rinse. Um, <clears throat> I am actually going to go ahead and give my mirror a wipe. So, uh, the way that you kind of do that. Is again, since we can't submerge the mirror, what we're going to do is we're going to use plenty of, um, you know, kind of cleaning solution. I'll probably be doing uh, two cotton balls, you know, each time. And then, so what you do is you take two cotton balls, you go from, you know, inside out, you give one wipe. Um, and as I'm wiping, I'm trying to rotate the cotton ball so that the fresh portion of the surface, you know, contacts the mirror every single time. And then you just kind of keep on doing this. All right, guys, so uh, I wiped the whole mirror. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to give her another squirt to wash off um, any of the, you know, lint, rubbing alcohol or, you know, anything like that from the wiping. So we're going to do that. And then... At this point, um, technically guys, since we're using uh, distilled water, you could just let the mirror dry and it should be fine. But uh, since I have a good compressed air setup, I am going to just uh, blow dry this basically. Alrighty guys, so at this point, I've got most of the water off. Um, chances are you're not gonna get like every little tiny droplet, which is fine. Again, once this dries, this sh there really should not be any, um, you know, residue. If there's a little bit of water spotting, I mean, that's not gonna hurt anything at all. So um, if you, just in case you're curious, you know, why you need the Kleenex, typically I actually even dry mirrors with Kleenex, but since this one is not removable, we're not gonna really touch it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the Kleenex and kind of just like if I see any large water spots, you know, kind of dip that out. You could use uh, your edge. So kind of like these guys here and you, the, the Kleenex, like if you kind of put it right up to the spot, it kind of like zaps it almost, you know, so it's pretty cool. Um, 
I always find that the larger water, uh, you know, drops, they do leave like a little bit of spawn if you let them just dry. Okay, um, overall, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you can probably already see, so I mean, there's a, you know, pretty decent size difference between, you know, like the side of the mirror that we washed and the side that we didn't wash. Okay, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull this thing out, the drip uh, tray or drip paper, I should say. Okay, so we are going to set this aside. Actually, since I'm gonna use it on the other side, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a wipe, so the less water on it, the better. I mean, it is paper after all, so it will kind of, you know, eventually soak through. Okay, and then let's see what's going on here. All right, so overall, I mean, again, we did have a little bit of bleed through here. Nothing too terrible. So just kind of give it a wipe here. And yeah, so it's pretty dry here. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna reposition and start doing the other side. Alrighty guys, and the mirror is totally dry. The cleaning procedure is done. And I will say this looks a ton better than when I started. So overall, there's a minimal amount of spotting left. Uh, again, with distilled water, you really shouldn't have too much of that left. Sometimes there is still some because, you know, like some of the grime or whatever will be left over. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, it's a fleeting effort if you try to get it more and more perfect. So I'd say clean it once if you have to clean it. Uh, and then, you know, if it looks like this, trust me, uh, your astrophotography is not going to suffer. Your visual effects or your visual views are not going to suffer either. And then this is good to go to be right under the stars. Alrighty guys, welcome back. We are all done. Primary mirror is nice and clean. Came out amazing, just like I was hoping. Again, to reiterate, if you're thinking about cleaning your primary mirror, chances are you do not need to. You know, like ask somebody that's knowledgeable about it. You know, if anything, look up my email, shoot me an email with some pictures. And I'll let you know if you know if it's worth doing, but chances are it probably isn't. Uh, so I haven't said all that. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, comments or anything like that, please leave them in the thumb below. If you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.